Hi guys, welcome back. Some of the changes in the garden over the last few days. I replaced um, that um, manila mango with another manila mango, right? I bought three last summer, two backups. And now the backups are ready to um, replace the, the one that was dead. It should not have died being planted here with the um, protection that I gave it over winter, but it died. Unbelievable, but true. The, um, the tropical passion fruit survived, but the mango, the seedling mango, didn't. So let's see what this Manila mango does over the next six months, summer and autumn. Well, it'll do well, of course. So the other thing is... Um, I've taken off all the covers. I took off the cover for the banana can. And you can see here what state it's in. Uh, this one was fully covered, not only on the sides but over the top as well. You can see that none of the leaves here at the top were affected. Right? Nothing was affected at all at the top or the middle. All the sides just this here was I don't know why but this got the brunt of the cold this little piece here so that's uh, four leaves we lost four leaves on banana can other than that Wow perfect perfect results looks like I just planted it from uh, dailies doesn't it well that's been here all winter, completely covered. There's no um, sign of any new growth on it yet, still waiting. So should be coming in the next week or two. So that's banana can or the banana mango, right? I've got another one of these in a the pot as a backup and it didn't do as well as this did. So the one in the greenhouse suffered, and the one in the ground didn't. Oh, man. Anyway, the Namroy pomelo is going off. I don't know why it gets thousands of flowers for when there's only going to be like a dozen fruit. Okay, and I took off the, uh, the frost cloth around the uh, Bowen mango seedling. And I already cut off some of the dead wood here at the top, right? I didn't do this one, but there you can see, and there's all the cuttings that I took off down there, all the dead, the dead um, cold damage, cold damage. Look, look at that. That one there is completely dead, and this one here is completely dead. And this one here is completely dead. And this one here is... Mm, we'll see. We don't know about that yet. This one's all right. And this one's all right. As a matter of fact, this one's coming to life. As you can see. It's got two new um, signs of growth. So, yeah. The seedling... Bowen survived, but wow, it, what a cost. You would expect a trunk of two inches, at least two inches, right? Would not be affected, um, but it was. It was affected by cold. All the way down to, down to, look, look at that, to there. Wow, and, and here, unbelievable. I'm really shocked that the seedling is not so um, tough. Very shocked. I would expect this on a grafted tree. Oh well, we'll see what um, what happens this summer. But that's a good sign to begin the season with. Right there. Still, I'm not um, I'm not satisfied with the results. It evidently needed full protection. Wow. Okay, this is the uh, 
um, Custard Apple, the Paxton Prolific. It's dropped its second fruit. The first one was completely rotten. And this one here may be uh, rotten as well. I have a feeling it will be. Just get that feeling. When you see this black in here, that's not a good sign. So instead of taking it in the house, I'm just going to leave it here in the bag till it gets soft. And then we can eat it together. Or eat it. <laughs> At least open it. I don't know about eating it. So that's the, the first, well, decent looking custard apple. And there's another one over here that's got that black inside it. I don't know how that's going to come out, but that hasn't dropped yet. And then we have a third one over there. See that one over there? That one doesn't seem to have that black spot or blackness. Looks looks like the healthiest of all of them. And then we've got li little ones like that and another little one over there. That one up there. Yep. So we've got about five or six fruit on this one. Oh, here's another one, sorry. There's another one here as well, which I haven't covered. This one looks decent as well, no black spot at all. So, I don't know why some got it and some didn't. And here's a little one here. Oh, that's got the black um, mar markings on the outside, not inside. So, someone in the comments wrote that it's uh, anthracnose. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Meanwhile, the tree is uh, pushing out new growth, just. Here it is here, I showed you that a couple of weeks ago, right? And it's very slow. These guys wake up very, 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 very slowly. Look, really slowly. That can be sitting like that for two months until Christmas. That's how slow things move here in Melbourne <laughs> yeah two months and where is it yeah this guy here he's been like that for almost a month since September and he'll probably be there like that till December so three months of just playing um, waiting the waiting game yeah and then bang once Christmas comes these take off it's like wow we're in the tropics now what happened we go from temperate to tropical overnight once the, the temperatures stabilize. And here we have the, uh, um, the first white sapote that's ready to fall off, the, um, the vista. So together with uh, all the flowers that are coming, these have been flowering all winter, all spring. There's the, uh, the vernon, that's the beast. And that's holding a lot of fruit as well. But this one here is holding the first fruit that are going to drop. Namely, this one here, this guy, and this one. This one actually is ready to fall any day now. This one here, it's actually soft. I can probably eat it now. But I wanted to um, get even softer. So this guy is ready to drop. There's an ant in there. An ant, an ant hanging out in there. This one will be next. So we've got two there, and we've got four there. They'll be the first uh, white sapotis for the season, coming in spring, which is uh, a little unusual. Usually, they're not ready till um, late summer. The first ones, very, very unusual to have them in spring never happened before in eight years so after a few years it seems like they they move they shift in their um, um, periods of maturing and ripening I don't know how to explain it but that's what I'm picking up and then you got the Vernon here it's got about 20 fruit but they're still small these won't be ready till autumn. So they'll be mid-season mid-season fruit. 
I'm guessing around May or June. So I got Tommy to mow the lawn again yesterday. So that's the second mow we've done in only two weeks. And talking about mowing, my neighbor came out with his brush cutter as soon as I started the camera. Great. So this peach here doesn't look good at all. This is the donut peach. I might, up, I'm, I might end up pulling it out. It's really nasty. I can't control the leaf curl. It's gotten away. And the fruit, although come out fine, they get um, fruit fly. Yeah, I get fruit fly on peaches now in Melbourne. So we're screwed with the leaf curl. And if you beat the leaf curl, then you gotta try to beat the uh, fruit fly. And it's really not worth it. Not worth it. That'll give me a new spot here to plant uh, another tree. Ah, oh, we can do with all the spots we can get. And the golden queen peach isn't doing much better. She's also full of leaf curl and uh, eventually fruit fly. Although she's also holding, well, maybe 20 fruit. It's a real shame because um, we like the peaches, guys, but they don't like us. So here you can see the uh, the new persimmon tree, which has been in the ground only one year. Look how it's taken off this spring, huh? It's almost it's almost as tall as me. It's at around um, four foot ten, and it's loaded. It's absolutely loaded with fruit. I would say at least twenty to twenty-five persimmon, and there's no way I'm going to leave so many on here. I hope most of them fall off. I might leave one or two. Just a sample. Very vigorous uh, variety. And the variety is the Shuruga or the 20th century. Yeah, it's amazing. Only after one year, it's fully loaded and almost tall as me. And there's the guy making all the noise up there. Yeah. So next we have the um, the carob with new growth. Right? Nice. New growth everywhere. Flushes of new growth. And here at the top is grown Wow, um, I wish the mangoes would be so, <laughs> would be so, um, um, I don't know, would be the same. Just looking at trees like this, the way they just wake up and take off in spring, it's like, wow. Too bad the, um, the white sapotis do that too. Too bad the mangoes and the relinias don't do that here. It's like begging them and pleading them to not die let alone flush out like this. Anyway, this is the carob. Check it out, that's a good 12 to 15 inches of growth in the last month on that um, branch too, leading branch. Looks like it's gonna have three leading branches. One, two, three. And not only that, it's fruiting. After only one year in the ground, guys, after only one year, we're getting fruit. On our new tree look check out the um, the carob pods there's like a dozen of them can you believe it flushing fruiting no problems loves winter huh and it's evergreen it doesn't drop its leaves <sighs> should have made a video just on the carob stunning and this is the self-pollinating variety, the Clifford. Grafted, not cheap. This is over a hundred dollars. And what's going on here? More, more new growth. And over here, more new growth. So guys, if you want a, a carob tree, just go with this one tree, this one variety. Exposed to winter, 
and unprotected then the Elsh uh, pomegranate is loaded with flowers waiting for them to pop open there's like 50 or more flowers on the Elsh last year it only gave us two fruit or three or four I can't remember but they were sour they weren't any good this is a a seven-year-old pomegranate tree and it's taken a long long time to get established and to get quality fruit and that guy there he's 11 years old or 10 10 11 years old that's the Ben Hur and that's um, 2.3 meters and that also sets flowers but that's a little this one comes a little later after the um, the Elsh um, the little blood orange that I planted in summer is doing really well waking up that's the um, the Arnold little baby so yeah blood orange is fine here <clears throat> any citrus is fine here guys don't even think about it I was told so often you can't grow blood orange you can't grow <coughs> lime you can't grow pomelo it's too cold yeah right wrong okay I removed the uh, the protection from the papaya yesterday um, around the 20th or the 21st of um, October as our night temperatures now are above 10 that's the sweet spot above 50 Fahrenheit at night and uh, it's alive it's doing fine there's a little yuckiness in here in this part here right a little cold damage you could say right oh look at all the ants they're freaking out hang on I disturbed them I don't know what they're doing in there. Must have been a nest. Yeah, so this stem here is doing fine. And um, the main trunk is solid as a rock. No no rot at all. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm very happy with the papaya. I forget what variety it is. The um, we lost the the tag. I don't know where the tag is now disappeared I'm sure it's under there somewhere but that's not important right now what's important is seeing this guy growing I'm moving all the um, the mulch away from the bottom so it doesn't rot down there as it's moist we're gonna be getting a lot of rain tonight and the next seven days so this will be its first um, downpour experience since the frost cloth was um, blocking the rain <clears throat> for the last six months the red chatut is almost ready right the first um, mulberries are turning red so that's about a week or two away should be ready by um, beginning of November there's thousands of them. New growth on the Mexican cream guava. So that survived winter, un unprotected. In its third year, seems pretty happy. We've got to wait for it now to get established. It's only been in the ground for one year. There's the uh, red chatut mulberry again, very lush. The wompy, I cut away a couple of branches at the bottom a couple of weeks ago, as I said I would. So the tree goes up and not um, over here, the wrong way. And it's also getting a lot of flushes. Tons. 
overall a lot of good news. This is the good news time of the year. October till May. Um, the bad news is over, you know. The dead trees, the, the ones that didn't survive winter, that's, that's about over now. Even the, uh, this pl plantain is starting to come back and shoot out new leaves. Right, look, it's getting a new leaf. The figs are waking up. Figs aren't a big deal here. Someone asked me yesterday in, in the comments, what do I feed or mulch my, not, not mulch, feed. How do I fertilize my uh, fig trees? I don't fertilize them at all. I just give them uh, chop and drop. Chop and drop is what I give the fig trees and they, they thrive. They don't need, the figs don't need fertilizing. Here where I am, the purple guava is, is bushing out, right? It's got tons of uh, little flower buds coming all around. There's gonna be a, a big bushy guava tree here. And I want it for privacy too. So it blocks the street looking into the front yard. I used to have a camellia here. Like that one there. See that one? 30 year old camellia tree. Right here. And it got knocked over in last year's storm. Hopefully he's stronger than a camellia. But it's going to take five or six years. At least. All right, so we've got the two avocados here that are still flowering. I don't know if they'll fruit in their first year in ground. The um, cherry moya is waking up. This is the new cherry moya I put in the ground at the end of summer. It's getting uh, a lot of new growth coming. or well, it's waking up, I should say, from winter. It's out of focus, of course. And this is the Dr. White or White variety. Yeah. So, tiny little thing. That'll take about five years before it starts to fruit decent, <laughs> decently. I discovered a seedling avocado in there um, a few months ago that... Um, is a volunteer. I did not plant that. That either, that either came from a, a pit, a seed that is, that was from the compost, or somehow found its way there in this little banana patch. So that's interesting to see the avocado seedling. I'm just going to leave it there as an experiment. Still in the process of pulling out this agapantha. I started on it last week, as you can see. So that'll be gone by this should be gone by the end of November to make room for the loquat to breathe and for me to plant uh, probably another cherry moya in here to complement the other two cherry moyas that I have down there. The kumquat of course is uh, mostly ready. We've been feasting on these. It's hard to eat them though, uh, though because there's too many. It's beautiful though. It's like They're like it's like a Christmas tree. <laughs> wow. For me, this is more of a novelty, ornamental, because it's a lot of work to pick these and um, make them into jam. I don't have the time. Mmm. Wow. Look at that. If I had my grandmother here, I would give her the job. <coughs> That's what they used to do in the old days, guys. Grandmas were put to use in, with jobs like that. Now grandmas at the uh, poker machines, playing the pokies. This is the... Um, <coughs> potted banana. That fruited. And so did the other one. After three years. Dang. Took forever. 
So I really don't recommend growing bananas in pots here in Melbourne because I'm showing you why. I'm showing you the results. Mm. Black sapoti. Getting a little bigger. They're inching their way. Right? Inching. So one inch every month. We're getting there slowly. So it looks like it's going to be... Um, <clears throat> a late December crop. Slash January. Before they're um, probably that big. The size of a billiard ball. But next year we're going to thin it. We're going to thin this. We can't be having a hundred fruit on the size of marbles. <coughs> yeah, so this is the white chatut, which is still in the process of um, ripening. That's fully covered all around. Um, the apricots are coming along nicely. It's loaded. The potted uh, pomegranate are doing great, even flowering. Oh, well, ready to flower. These are the um, the Russian rosavaya, and um, what was that one? Yeah, rosavaya. <clears throat> it's, it's got a flower as well. They really bushed out nicely. So hopefully they'll be happy now that they have sources. They were so thirsty last summer. Wow. I'm surprised they even survived. Well, that's about it from the front. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else. We've collected almost a dozen um, passion fruit. That one up there is ready to fall. That guy there. But uh, they take a week to eat once they fall. They've got to shrivel. Because if you don't let them shrivel, they're sour. And uh, it's full on flowering time now. Or it has been since the beginning of September. So plant your passion fruits, guys. If you're in Melbourne. They, um, they do well here. But they need heat. They need heat. And they need um, good drainage. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the back. Oh, the um, Grumi Chama is ready to flower too. These are ready to pop open. Every year it's the same time. Exactly at the beginning of November. So next week, this will be covered in flowers. We're about a month behind Queensland. I think in Queensland they're already um, ripening and um, eating them. They're, I think they're eating them, I'm not sure. The uh, lemon guava is still sleeping. The guavas are a little slow this year. Still uh, infant size. Yeah. But wow, look at the flush. Remember, it's not always about the fruit, it's also about the tree. Look at the flush on this. Um, Lemon guava, the new growth, right? Look at that. It's uh, seven feet tall now, 2.1 meters. I'm trying to keep it away from the the passion fruit, which is trying to trying to wrap itself around. So I'll always keeping my eye on it, keeping my eye on the uh, on the the progress there. Wow, lots of flowers here. Flower buds on the uh, white sapoti. Okay, I think we're done. I think we're done here with the uh, front yard. I waited for the sun to go down because it was sunny all day. Let's show you. How are you going, guys? 26 Celsius today in Melbourne. 24 yesterday, or 25 yesterday. And 23 the day before. Yeah, we're finally having subtropical weather finally at the end of october <sighs> 
the Suriname cherry is still doing this, doing nothing. It's like giving me these little flower buds. Oh, I see the first one opening. All right, finally. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Okay, let's see if this one turns to fruit because it's never flowered in October. This will be a first. Now that it's warm enough, we should be able to get fruit. Traditionally or historically, this was flowering in August and August is freezing here. Uh-uh, there's a flower there. August is freezing here. So all the flowers will just drop off. We should be able to get fruit now for the first time. Crossing my fingers, guys, on the uh, Surinam cherry. Yeah, all right, let's go to the back. Pineapple guava still um, hasn't woken up fully. Okay. The Glen Mango is still not doing much, just pushing that there. Right. So not much on him. All right, let's go. Let's go to the back. All right, we're in the back now, but um, I checked it and it says 31 minutes, so I'm going to make a part two, guys. Otherwise, we'll be over an hour. And we're, no one wants an hour-long video. Okay. Please come back for part two, which will be a lot more interesting than part one because I, I've done quite a bit of work back here, which you'll see in part two. That is in the last couple of days. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. And we'll see you soon. Very, very soon. This is the, the words getting the heck what do you call it um getting um the heck pollinated out of it pollinated the heck out of it jeez what am i saying yeah and you can smell the flowers <laughs> wow it's full-on avocado pollination season wow all day this was buzzing you won't hear it now because um we've got a lot of road noise out on the highway the words double whammy two words trees all right guys see you later wow full on full on